Morning, YG here. Do you have brain fog or difficulty concentrating or waking for no clear reason? What about fatigue, waking up exhausted even after eight hours of sleep or even difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep? Well, if so, you may have problems with your adrenals. And it's something that's not talked about, but yet can have profound effects on our bones and overall health. Well, today we're delving into the adrenals with our very special guest, Marcel Pick. And Marcel is an OBGYN nurse practitioner who's passionate about transforming the way women experience healthcare through an integrative approach. She co-founded the world-renowned Women to Women Clinic in 1983 with a vision to not only treat illness, but also help support her patients in proactively making healthier choices to prevent diseases. She has successfully treated thousands of individuals through her unique approach to wellness. In 2001, Marcel created MarcelPick.com with a goal to be able to reach, inspire, and educate even more women worldwide. Her website offers informative articles on women's health issues and at-home solutions to some of the most troublesome symptoms they experience today. Marcel discovered functional medicine early on in her career and was honored to be among the first to be certified as a functional medicine practitioner. She is certified as an OBGYN nurse practitioner and a pediatric nurse practitioner and is a member of the American Nurses Association and the American Nurse Practitioner Association. Marcel is currently a faculty member of the Institute of Functional Medicine and has served as a medical advisor to Healthy Living Magazine. And she lectures on a variety of topics, including weight loss resistance, infertility, stress and illness, and adrenal dysfunction. She's the author of The Core Balance Diet, Is It Me or My Adrenals, and Is It Me or My Hormones. She has appeared on Dr. Oz, Fox, and ABC, and has been featured in Glamour Magazine, Elle Magazine, and Women's, Magazine, Women's World Magazine. Marcel's PBS show, Is It Me or My Hormones, is a favorite among viewers. And today we talk about the adrenals. How do you know if you might have an issue with your adrenals? What testing can be done? And what can you do to support your adrenals? So today's interview is filled with lots of great information. So stay tuned. Welcome, Marcel. I'm really excited to have you on the podcast. And this topic of our adrenals is something that most people don't even know about, but yet can affect every aspect of our health and especially our bones. So everybody listen in because Marcel is really an expert on this and so full of amazing information. So thank you for being here. Oh, absolutely. I love talking about this because so few people understand adrenals and we can get right into the information. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So, well, why don't just before we get started, why don't, I always like the backstory, you know, so I know why people are so passionate about what they do. So, maybe just tell us how you got so involved with adrenals and this whole area. Sure. So, I've been in practice a long time 37 years doing women's health. And along the way, I was um, intrigued at how often, number one, in my practice, I would see people coming in saying, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. And I, at the time, was, you know, covering for three OB practices as well and had a one-year-old and twins, and I was exhausted. And I did all my blood work. It was all fine. And sure enough, one of my friends said, look, let's check your adrenals. And they were just wiped out and started understanding that, you know, we can look at thyroid levels in their normal. We'll look at, you know, iron levels in their fine. And we look at everything that's fine. And people have had so much stress for so long. And what we find is that even when you have a lot of stress as a kid and that same stress then we take into our lives later. That, for example, if you grow up in a family and you are expected, you know, or expecting of yourself to be perfect, that perfectionism creates problems as you get older. And what that does is it causes problems with the adrenals. So let's talk about what the adrenals are because a lot of people don't even yes. know. The adrenals are tiny little um, glands that sit on top of our kidneys and we call them essential. And they're essential because we can't live without them. And if you have a lot of stress, generally what happens is that 
the stress is there, it goes away. A hundred years ago, you're being chased by a tiger. The tiger went away or you got killed. Well, these days we have ongoing stress. And that ongoing stress causes our cortisol levels oftentimes to go up. When the stress goes away, love goes back to normal and we're fine. But with chronic stress that we might have, especially if we're expecting perfect things of ourselves, and if you're a mom and have kids like I did and you have a practice and you have to be responsible, that causes a lot of cortisol to be produced. If you don't have the other side of the coin, because we have a sympathetic nervous system and a parasympathetic nervous system, if you don't have a situation in which you've always got the other side to calm things down, the body's always on rev. And when that happens, here's the interesting part is the adrenals affect our thyroid. The adrenals affect our hormones. The adrenals affect our immune system. The adrenals affect our gut. The adrenals affect how we think. So we didn't realize for a long time that the adrenals play into every single body part. And for a long time, you would see somebody who say, oh, just decrease your stress. You know, just breathe a little bit more, just do a little bit more yoga and you're gonna be fine. And we realize now that's not the case. And there's something else I wanna point out to people. Many years ago in 1998, somebody did a study called the ACE study, which is Adverse Childhood Events. And they looked to see if you had adverse events as a kid, a parent that died, um, you came from a single parent home, did any of those things actually cause problems for you long term? And the answer was a resounding yes. We didn't know that for a long time. And if you, on a score of one to 10, if you have a lot of adverse events, a parent died, you didn't feel loved, perhaps it was alcoholism in the family, perhaps even sexual abuse, physical abuse, if your score was four or more on that scale, your chances of heart disease are 165% higher. Suicide, early um, disabilities, kidney disease, cancers and lung disease even autoimmune issues. So we've started to see now from this particular study, because it's one of the largest studies in the history of medicine, oh my God, our stress from back there? That affects me today? No way. And the answer is yes, it does. Now, how does it affect you? Well, it affects cortisol production. So this notion of, oh, just decrease your stress, you know, just breathe a little bit more. It's more complicated than that. Our diet plays into it. Our thoughts play into it. You know, that thought about, I should have done better. And you think about things a lot over and over, that produces more cortisol. So it's really learning to think differently, to eat differently, to behave differently, because the adrenals play so much into the biochemistry of the body. So it's really some of the master things. So if I'm looking at somebody's menopausal symptoms or even bone health, I'm going to be looking at adrenals first. You know, it's so interesting because the cortisol, the cortisol, they've done studies on that and increased cortisol actually reduces the osteoblast, the bone building cells. So it affects every, as you said, every area of our health. No question. Yeah. And it increases inflammation. And that's the cascade that really uh, intercepts bone health the most is that inflammatory cascade that goes on. And people are like, Marcel, there's no way just being stressed out is going to cause all these problems. And the answer is, I wish it wasn't true, but it is true. But on the other hand, that's a good thing because there's so much we can do. Right. Absolutely. So why don't you just tell me about the symptoms? Is there anything else you wanted to say about that? No, before? I mean, I think it's a great ground, you know, starting point to talk about, you know, why the adrenals are so important to pay attention to. So what symptoms, you know, people are sitting here, well, how would I know? How do I have any idea if I have issues with my adrenals? Because yeah. as you said, I think you said something so, so important that your blood work can be, you may go to the doctor and they may say, everything's fine. There's nothing wrong with you. But yet there is a problem with the adrenal. So, so it's those people that come in my office and say, Marcel, I'm exhausted. I, you know, can't sleep at night. And I, or somebody comes in and says, I, I sleep beautifully. And I wake up and I can hardly get out of bed. I need three cups of coffee. Or the person that says, I'm fine, but in the mid-afternoon, I'm gone. Or at the end of the day, you, wanna, you want me to go somewhere? Forget it. I just, I don't have the energy. 
the person whose hormones are very dysregulated, no matter what we're trying to do. That other person who comes in and their thyroid levels have normalized with being on thyroid, but then they're up and down all over the place because the adrenals can undermine that. The person has foggy thinking. They just can't think really clearly because their adrenals are very maxed out. The person has autoimmune disorders. I'm going to be really mindful of what's going on with their adrenals because autoimmune disorders are very connected to adrenals, the dysfunction that's been going on for a long time. And I might see somebody that's wired and tired. So they're revved up. They have a lot of anxiety that might also be related to their adrenals. So it's very, very important to check their adrenals as well. So it's going to be always something I'm going to be mindful of is what's going on with their adrenals. If they can't sleep at night, it may not be a melatonin issue. It may be a cortisol issue because when cortisol's up, your body does as though it's time to start my day. You know, I've got energy here. Even though you're exhausted, you can't, uh, you can't sleep. And so what do you typically do in terms of your testing and how do you evaluate this? Absolutely. So here's the interesting thing. When we, when we a lot of times people will go to their docs. I did a, a show last night and that's indeed the questions that people were asking me is, you know, well, well, how do I get it tested? Will my regular doctor do it? And the answer is no. Generally, when we go and we have our PCP or our primary doctor check us, they're going to be looking for two things. One is whether you have Addison's disease, which is very, very, very low cortisol levels or very, very high, which is Cushing's syndrome. We don't see that very often in the population. Thank goodness. President Kennedy did have it and he needed to be on cortisone for the rest of his life. But generally speaking, people are on the extremes, but not the very outer extremes. So the labs still are normal when we do it in a lab. The other issue with doing it in a lab with blood is that it's one static number. Well, cortisol isn't produced that way. Cortisol is what we call biurnal. It's high in the morning and low at night. And you want to check all those points because you might have them up and down. You might have them flatlined. You might have them very, very high. So we need to find out what else is going on when we see those numbers in that way. And so what do you recommend with that? Saliva testing. So saliva testing is done first thing when you wake up, 30 minutes later, noon, four in the afternoon, and around 10 or, or midnight at night. And it's the cortisol, that's when we're able then to intervene for that individual to say, ah, we need a little something here to get it up and we need a little something here to get it down. Especially if we see it high at night, then we need something called phosphatidylserine to bring that cortisol level down so that we can then normalize that curve that should be high in the morning and low at night. That's the good news. That, that's the good news, everyone listening, that there's so much that can be done. And really, it's interesting because there's so many physicians in the, my family, and you're absolutely right. They don't, that's just the only two things they're really taught. Is it Addison's or is it Cushing's? And everything else they don't realize can have major effects, but it's just not looked into. So well, the part that's so interesting is that many times when you when you'll talk to practitioners, they'll say there's no data. There's no data to support what you're saying. And I teach the Institute of Functional Medicine. I teach in one of the modules that you have to take to become certified. And the reality is, I only do you know research in terms of my presentation just because we're really trying to be um, as on board as we can with the research. And there's tons of research to show. Too. A lot of ongoing stress with high cortisol causes autoimmune issues, digestive issues, changes in the microbiome, thyroid issues, hormonal issues, increased risk of cancer. Those are all connected scientifically. So it's no longer this woo-woo thing. You just get your adrenals tested, you know, it's you know, kind of the woo-woo. It isn't. It's one of the markers that we look at, just like a blood sugar le level. We want to find out what your blood sugar is, what your blood pressure is. What's the trending that you have in terms of adrenal function so that we can really help people look at what's their long-term health? How can they really learn what to do? And here's the key piece. Most of us are living our lives in what we call sympathetic overload. We've got too much stress coming out, especially over the last year. You know, we're, we're mothers that are trying to homeschool their kids. They have no idea how to do it. They're trying to figure out homework, they're trying to figure out their job. They've got aging parents are trying to figure out food and navigate that. Plus they have a job that they need to sit down for than when you used to be very active for. Oh my God, just saying all that's overwhelming. So that has very much affected us in the last year. And our cortisol levels have gone very high for many people. 
Now, the other thing that happens when that happens is it oftentimes you have a hormone called DHEA. DHEA is a feel-good hormone. You're, it gives you your get up and go for the day. It helps with sex drive. It helps you feel good. And when that level goes down, because oftentimes it will go up to compensate for that cortisol level that's been high too long, it comes down. And when you have a low DHEA level, sex drive's gone, your get up and go is gone, you don't have the stamina, you might feel depression and kind of mood swings. If it's not a vitamin D issue, it can be related to DHEA. So it's looking at this whole orchestra. So going back to this notion of being in sympathetic overload, if we don't learn the balance of that, which is the seesaw, we need to have both going on. We have to have the counter to that, which is getting in parasympathetic. Our body needs to have the brakes put on so that we don't always have lots of stress and cortisol. So what are the things you can do to do that? It's breathing. It's doing yoga if you like that. I'm a ballroom dancer, so it's dancing for me. Um, it's one of those activities that you just feel out of your body that you're able to do on a regular basis and just adore and love. Those are the things you need on a daily basis. Even if it's doing seven, seven, seven breathing, inhale for seven, hold for seven, exhale for seven, seven times twice a day. Anything that helps your body get into whew, meditation, Rolfing, you know, Feldenkrais, anything like that is very, very helpful. It's finding what works for you is the key. And I think the other key is realizing how absolutely essential this piece is. Because oftentimes, you know, I see people all the time, what exercise, you know, they're concerned about their bones. What exercise can I do? You know, what, you know, what can I eat? What are the supplements? And, they, and they're completely stressed out and they don't realize that that is is so important and you must take care of that piece. So I, I couldn't agree with you more. But let's go back. So the person is questioning. So cortisol levels and what other things then do you typically do to, to really figure out where you want to go with somebody? So when I'm seeing somebody in my office, because I've had a functional medicine practice for a long time, I'm going to be looking at everything. I'm going to be looking at thyroid tests, you know, not just generally the TSH, but I'm looking at free T3, free T4, uh, reverse uh, T3, thyroid antibodies, total T3. I'm going to be looking at adrenal function, doing a saliva test. I oftentimes will look at the gut. You know, I'll do stool testing to find out what's the gut microbiome look like, because that can be one of the pieces that's affected by too much stress for too long and the environment of the microbiome. I'm going to be looking at regular hormone levels. What's your estrogen level? What's your progesterone level? What's your testosterone level? What's your sex hormone binding globulin level? So I can kind of round out the picture. You know, when I think of somebody that has bone issues, I'm thinking about, well, how did they get a hole in their bucket? You know, what do we, what do we need to do? Not just plug the bucket up, but what do we need to do to figure out what happened upstream that created some of that problem? Stress can be a part of it, but there's many other things that can be a part of that as well. And also how much, you know, how much worry does someone have in their lives? Because this constant fretting and worrying about things, and I hear it in my office all the time, well, I'm worried about the pandemic and my children and my daughter, you know, just had this issue with her husband, and then I'm worried about my parents, and I don't know how I'm going to blah, blah, you know? You have to find ways to, to muster the energy to not worry so much, because that worry causes significant health issues including cortisol problems. And I teach people the whole idea about as you think, so goes your life. So if you've got this constant, you know, I'm not good enough, I'm not enough, which a lot of women have, I can't stand my body, my arms are too fat, my, whatever they do, that's a significant problem. So I get them to change their thinking because that's also part of the regime of treatment for adrenal issues too. Well, that's great. So, you know, it sounds like you really attack it from all angles. So when people back to the symptoms, though, so they may be tired, fatigued. Is there anything else? Because I know there's, you know, two extremes. If you're really, if your adrenals, you have absolutely no energy. Is there anything any other well, things that you can do? Absolutely. And, and it's, it's tied into so many things. You get in, you get sick all the time. And you're like, you can't understand it because you're taking all your supplements. You can't sleep no matter what you do. You've tried melatonin, you've tried trial and RPM. You may have even tried some of the medications and nothing really seems to help you feel really rested in the morning. Your sense of kind of well-being is gone. You know, people oftentimes will come in and say, 
I just, I feel, you know, I'm, I'm starving for food. And even though I eat, it doesn't make any difference because it's not food that, that you really need, nor is it a blood sugar issue. It's more of an adrenal issue because cortisol levels are down too much. Somebody craves licorice. I become suspicious because licorice increases cortisol levels. So I'm looking at many of the symptoms because I can oftentimes tie it into adrenals. So people that have autoimmune or immune issues, they get sick all the time. They don't have energy. They can't sleep at night. They have brain fog. They have digestive issues. They have hormonal issues. They have PMS. Many of those things are going to be tied into adrenals because everything's related. And I think in functional medicine, one of the things we talk about is the matrix. You know, what's going on with your digestive system, your cardiac system, your you know, endocrine system, they're all connected. And oftentimes adrenals can be one of the things that kind of ties them together. What lifestyle do you have? What are the food choices you're making? Are you someone who uses you know, sugar because you're, you just feel like you need more energy? I'm going to be suspicious of blood sugar pieces, but also of adrenals for that particular person too. You know, has the joy gone out of your life? Are you just feeling like, I just you know, I don't care anymore. Apathy that can be related to adrenals as well. So the good news, bad news is many things can be related, um, which is good and bad. But um, it does require that people then be more conscientious about making lifestyle changes. So important. So let's talk about what people can do to support their adrenals because a lot of these things are just not known. And I think one of the piece I just wanted to comment on is that you know so often people look at the body as segmented. Oh, you have a problem with your bones, you know, osteoporosis. You, but it's all related. Just like you said, everything connects. So I love the way you address it. And I love how functional medicine addresses it, that we look at the whole person and the interconnection. And when one piece gets better, other pieces get better at well. So it gets what gets better as well. So it's all good news. So yeah, so what can people do? What can people do to support their, I mean, you mentioned a lot of things that they can do to reduce the stress and reduce the worry, but you know, there's some more things as well. So um, the piece that's important to me is when I'm looking at adrenal function, I want to know what's going on at different times. I am very good at being able to kind of figure things out sometimes if I can't have the tests, but adrenals are a little bit different because what I'll see sometimes is I thought it was going to be high in the morning and it's actually really low um, or vice versa. So I like to see the tests and then I might use some adaptogenic herbs and what adaptogenic herbs mean are if you have um, a situation in which you have high cortisol or low cortisol, adaptogenic herbs will normalize that level for people. Things like um, ashwagandha, which is one of my favorites, or cordyceps, rhodiola, um, all of those are very helpful. Then we have specific herbs that are used to increase cortisol, like licorice. Decoast rice licorice, because that then won't increase your blood pressure, or phosphatidylserine that brings cortisol levels down. A lot of times that's very, very effective to use at night before you sleep. Obviously, you're going to need to have the B vitamins in there because they really help greatly, and magnesium because magnesium is oftentimes deficient when you are having a lot of stress. Zinc is very important kind of during these times of the pandemic in particular. So I might have somebody do a multivitamin, vitamin D. To make sure that that pro hormone is up and you know look to see what their levels are so we know how much they need to be on anywhere from a thousand to six thousand a day depending on upon what their levels are but you need to know what they are because uh, vitamin d is a fat soluble vitamin so you can get high levels and it's hard to get out of the body and also making sure that you're getting essential fatty acids so omega-3 essential fatty acids um, and also sometimes omega-6s to make sure that you've got the evening primrose or balance in there we usually get enough omega-9s because of the cooking that we do and sometimes it's too much um, but it's finding that balance and whole foods you know doing breakfast lunch and dinner if I have somebody's really deplete I might have them do something like keto to get them out of you know kind of get them in ketosis for a little while I don't necessarily recommend for them that they do intermittent fasting because it might be too long that they go and their blood sugar may be dipped but again it's finding out how do you feel not doing sugar, not doing gluten. Gluten for some people can really compromise the adrenals a great deal. So it's really looking for that individual as to how do we balance their life, but it's whole foods. It's no artificial colors, sweeteners, dyes, staying away from that food that sits on the counter for a couple of weeks and it's still fine like Doritos. I love Doritos too, but um, I haven't had them for a number of years, but it's finding those things in your life that you actually make fresh. 
and you're doing those kinds of things on a regular basis. Being mindful of the things you put on your skin um, because we know that anything you put on your skin, you get ab absorbs into your tissue and that can cause what we call estrogen disruptors. So it actually changes the biochemistry of our hormones, putting plastic in the microwave, using plastic bottles um, all the time for water, all those things can actually affect our hormone stabilization and it can cause estrogen disruption and can cause an imbalance of estrogen progesterone. So it's all of that that's included in how do we get as healthy as we possibly can to kind of age gracefully, we call that as we get older. I love the fact that you're speaking about this because I've had people on toxins talk about what happens at their endocrine disruptors, but this is your area. This is what you see. So you actually see that. You know, a lot of times people, oh, come on. You know, a lot of people really are like, oh, you've got to be kidding. How, how big a deal can that be? But it's the buckets overfilled and it's a huge deal. So it's good to hear from an expert like you who deals with women and has dealt with this for so many years that these, these factors are important. Well, it's a piece of the puzzle, you know, I mean, I think the thing that happens is it's this plus this plus this plus this, and it's not just the plastics, it's the plastics plus, you know, all the other things that go into that. And everybody's a little different. We're all either more sensitive or not. And the key piece is that about 30%, 25 to 30% of the population can't detoxify very well. So it's going to be that person that is, oh my gosh, can't you smell that? I'm so chemically sensitive. Or they'll go to Home Depot and have a headache. Um, or they'll notice perfumes and they can't stand it or mold in a, in a building. Those people oftentimes either have mold problem themselves, which then can also cause adrenal issues. So that body's trying desperately to normalize and it can't do it. Or they have Lyme or they have another co-infection. That also can cause, you know, pretty significant adrenal issues. So we're needing to look at the big picture for everything to kind of look about, you know, we haven't had that much stress and you didn't really have a lot of stress as a kid. That's unusual, but it does happen. And so what else is going on? Oh, you had lots of mold exposure. So that's what's created this problem. So it's really looking at all of those things together to try to make a decision about what to do to help people. And 30%. 25 to 30% of people need to have some support for liver detoxification. So that would be the person whose bucket gets emptied a little faster because they can't get those toxins out of the system, which include that estrogen disruptor problem. So oh, interesting. So now in terms of recovery, what, what do you see? Because this could be a long-term process for some. What, what, what typically, or you can tell us the different ways sure. that you so, um much of it depends on how committed you are to adrenal support, but it means lifestyle changes, you know, going in and if somebody is um, working nights and they can't change that, that's really hard on the system. They're not getting adequate sleep. If somebody has tremendous amounts of stress and they can't change any of it and they're working, you know, overtime all the time, and that's going to take longer for those adrenals to heal. So when, you're, when you've got somebody who's in a situation of either exhausted and their adrenals are very, very low or up and down, which I call wired and tired, or they're just wired all the time, it takes a commitment to change your diet, to change your thinking, to see. And if I have somebody who's adrenally exhausted and I look at their adrenals and they're flatlined, I don't want them exercising. You know, even though we're told exercise is really good, I don't want their heart rate over 90. So some of that's going to depend upon the test results. Are you up, down, or all over the place as to what I recommend? Doing some kind of meditation. If you don't like to meditate, ballroom dance or dance or, or do something. And the name of the game for that is what takes you out of your thinking? What's going to prevent you from being in your head all the time and getting that cortisol level revved up? Well, when I dance, there's no way I can do that because if I do, I'm going to fall or I'm going to make my partner fall. So that's my thing. But what's your thing? What is it that you love to do that really allows you to be out of your environment of stress? That's going to be important. Changing your diet, changing the face creams that you use. Women use so many different chemicals on their skin. The average newborn has 150 different chemicals in its cord blood. That's a lot because of how our environment's changed. 
Actually, it's higher than that. It's 150 different uh, chemicals in it. It's breast in breast milk. It's 287 in the cord blood. So we've got a problem on our hands, and it's how can I address it for myself? You know, if you're going to use nail polish, use nail polish that doesn't have toxicity in it because that gets right into your skin. They look gorgeous. I did it for a long time, but no, you want to try and find something else, especially if you're dealing with adrenal issues. All of those things add up. And that's where you need to intervene, depending upon how horrible you feel is going to really entice you more than ever. Now, you asked me how long it takes. Everybody's different. I might see somebody notice complete differences in two months. I meet somebody else and I do their blood work or I do their saliva and it's like, wow, things haven't changed. It takes a while for that to come back around and that you get plenty of sleep. You know, we didn't talk about that. That's crucial. I have an aura ring. So I'm always looking to see what's my sleep like? You know, how much sleep did I get? Am I, you know, getting enough exercise in on a daily basis for myself? So finding an avenue to give you some feedback, either with a Fitbit or something like that. I don't like anything on my wrist, so I prefer to use the ring. But finding something that really gives you the feedback so you have a goal for yourself, but also being gentle with yourself. You're doing the best you can. And let's find out ways that you can be loving with yourself, have fun at the same time, and shift things. Wow. Well, you're talking to a person who teaches happiness. So I'm just sitting here eating up every word you're saying and a physical therapist because so many people do exercise because they feel they have to. And especially if when you find out that you've lost bone and they tell you have to do strength training, you know, people are ready to shoot themselves on the treadmill or they're lifting the weights, like thinking, oh, I hate this. I'm just doing this. To... And that's just sending those negative chemicals through your body. So I love the idea of ballroom dancing. You know, I love that, but I don't do ballroom dancing, but I should because I love it. And when you're in the moment, in ballroom dancing, you're living in the moment. And so I think I think that's such a great example of finding things you love. What's your passion? And I think during this COVID, I think people have realized that they need to, or maybe have even found other things that they've enjoyed. But I so I couldn't agree with you more. And something else you brought up, though, which I think is very important, because the person who gets up and they can barely make it up, you know, someone who is really flatlined, as you said, or someone who's really, really does not have the cortisol and they're just constantly exhausted. And, you know, people will say to you, come on, get moving. You just need to exercise. You just need to do just like you said, you have to start slow. And that's that's very important, though, for for recovery. And I don't think people realize that. You know, you don't just snap out of it. Am I right? You just have to baby yourself. No, and, the, you know, we women are really hard on ourselves. We, we multitask all the time. We're taking care of everybody around us. We're oftentimes what I call codependent. So everybody else's life is more important than our own. And the reality is if we don't take care of ourselves, we're not going to be there to take care of anybody else. So it's learning tools and forgiving yourself if you've been so hard on yourself and you, you feel guilty when you take time out and take a bath or you do anything else like that, all those are really, really important pieces to understand that that needs to change and you need to be more loving. Self-care is not being selfish. It's being really responsible to those around you because the more you take care of yourself, the more you're going to have to give to other people. It's true. And you can't show up. You really can't show up your best self if you're not, if you're not nurturing yourself and taking care of you. are absolutely right. Absolutely. And I think as a culture, you know, um, I will be honest enough to say that I think for me, the feminist movement was really detrimental in that I then thought, not only am I going to be CEO of my company, which I am, I have three businesses, but I also had to be the perfect mother. I was on the board at the kids' school. I was making my daughter's costumes for dance. I was trying to have a relationship. I was trying to exercise. I was writing three books. And it was like, oh my God, I'm exhausted just talking about that. And I think we really have to understand that we all do the best we can. And if you're someone that wants to stay at home with your children, that's an amazing necessary accomplishment. And as a culture, unfortunately, that was not the case many years ago, certainly when I was kind of behind the scenes trying to figure it out. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I was the person who got a speeding ticket. I signed up for the um, eight-week mindfulness meditation program, and I got a speeding ticket on the way to meditation, but it was a good thing. It hit me in the head and said, you are not practicing what you preach. And since that time, I've made that a priority. And when you prioritize yourself, guess what? Everything gets better. Your life gets better, your health gets better, and as just like you said, Marcel, you show up better and you can be there to support other people. So it's just such a win-win. One more it's like yeah. such a silly metaphor, you know, on the plane, you put your oxygen on you first. But it is really true. You know, your people around you need you, but you have to show up for yourself first. Otherwise, you're gonna be so depleted. And that's what I hear from women all the time. I don't have anything left. I'm just, I'm done. I'm cooked. Uh, uh, uh. And that's why we have to replenish. We have to put gas back in the tank in order for you to be able to have that engine moving the way that it needs to move. Well, Marcel, you've done something really amazing that I'm so excited about. And it's going to be an, just an incredible resource. So fill us in on your Adrenal Solution Summit, because this is something you, you should be so proud of. I, I'm glad your adrenals aren't shot from doing this. <laughs> but tell everyone, because I think this is a free resource and it's amazing. So fill us in. So what I decided to do is give people hope and give people a resource of what do I do with all the stress that we've had over the last year? You know, how do I, how do I eat? What do I do for exercise? You know, what are some of the experts saying? We know that 80% of children are depressed. What are some of the pediatricians saying about that? What about men's health? They're always left out of this. How does that play into all of this with adrenals? So I got 51 of some of the best experts that I could find in all of these areas. And I interviewed them. So that we've got information about what's the, you know, what's a good diet for you? What about digestion? You know, Liz Lipsky, who wrote an incredible book called Digestive Wellness, is a friend of mine, and she's one of the experts. We have hormones that we talk about. We have toxicity that we talk about. We talk about kind of the Wi-Fi concept. We're talking about, you know, the father of all this to me, whose name is Jeff Bland, who's just the most amazing kind of educator. We're talking about keto with um, a, a physician whose name is Jatice, brilliant guy. And I also interviewed Nathan Crane, so we can talk about Shagung and some of the exercises, David Jockers, JJ Virgin, all of some of the, the people that have been so great about sharing their information online. But something I did that's a little different. A lot of times these summits are overwhelming. It's so much information. It's like, you know, how do I even figure this out? I summed it up at the end in terms of solutions. So each of the presenters gave a lot of information. And at the very end, I said, so... We need this much D, we need this much B, we need this much this. And so in regards to diet, what are some of the resources that we can put together? So you can actually use that information at the end to kind of take notes. And my goal was truly to be able to give you an opportunity to heal after this incredible year of stress, to look at what can you do to get as healthy and well as you possibly can in the years to come. Wow, <laughs> this is going to be incredible. I can't wait. I'm going to listen to everything, <laughs> but it's, so we'll have the link for everybody in the show notes and it starts February. What day February 1st is so the first day. Monday. Is that, is that on a Monday? Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's, yeah. Great. So the good news is this podcast, you'll have plenty of time to, totally to, to, to sign up and get all the talks. I, I didn't know that you did that with the end. That's such a good idea. Yeah, so I know. I, I've never seen anybody do it before. And I that's why I called it the Adrenal Solutions Summit. Let's, you know, yeah, it's wonderful. Everybody talks about adrenal fatigue and all that. But what are the, what are the answers? What are the solutions to this issue? Um, and I have somebody who's also talking about stem cells and talking about regenerative therapy. We're talking also about skin. You know, how does skin come into this picture? What are some of the skincare products that are really healthy for us as opposed to with Trevor Cates? So I really interviewed, you know, a number of people. There was a woman who's talking about structured water as well, Suzanne Bennett, uh, who's an allergist for children in particular. Um, so we've got lots of resources and lots of information. And the two pediatricians were amazing with regards to what do you do with children? You know, how do we really support them with all that's gone on over the last year? Wow, this is fantastic. But I just love the idea because you're right. So often it is, and I hear that from people. 
that, yes, the summit was great. There was so much information, but it's overwhelming. And overwhelm, no one wants to be an overwhelm because guess what? Overwhelm is stress. So I love the fact that you summed it up and that people can take what they want from your solutions part. Oh, that's just great. Very exciting. Just trying to figure out how to make it easy for people. Yeah. Oh, what a great resource. This is just unbelievable. I just, the nice thing is just think about that, Marcel. How many people you're going to help all over the world? Isn't that incredible? That must be, it has to make you feel so good when you do something that you're spre- really spreading kindness and joy and health all over. And so your hard work is really, I'm sure you're, you're, I know you're going to hear all sorts of and all sorts of yeah that was my goal is to really help people look at what what can I do you know uh the year's been hard on on many levels and it's also been amazing for some people as well but what are some of the things that we can see a lot of people gained a lot of weight so what what can they do about that as well so all the resources there for them to take away oh that's fantastic so before we end you've given such good information I could talk to you for so long because you have so much amazing you know, just from your background and what you've done and, you know, you've just helped so many people already, but what, was there anything else that you want to share? Did I miss anything? Or is there any last things that you want to share with everybody listening? You know, I think the thing to remember is no matter what the problem is, we oftentimes can figure out a solution. We just have to figure out what the issue is first to have a life filled with joy, happiness, and health. And, you know, the way our culture is now is, you know, you get to be your 60s or 70s and women are like, you know, well, I've been told that, you know, I'm kind of menopausal and it's kind of I'm going to gain five pounds every year. It's not true. It's absolutely not true. We can be really vibrant and healthy into our 90s and hundreds. And that's the goal for me is to and many of the speakers talk about that, especially the woman who talked about regenerative medicine. So there is, you know, we just have to understand what's holding you back if you're not feeling well so that we can get the solutions with functional medicine and get you where you need to go. Oh, love that. So everybody listening, I think there's a lot that can be done. And I'm so glad you brought the adrenals. I, this is just something that I think is critical for everyone to know about. And as you said, there's so much that can be done. Oh, yeah, definitely. So thank you so much. I can't wait to start listening to your summit. And thank you for all the work that you've done and really making such a positive impact on our world and women's health and everybody's health. So thank you so much. My pleasure. I hope you've enjoyed my interview with Marcel and now have a better understanding about your adrenals and how you can know if you're having issues, how you can test, and also what you can do to support your adrenals. Because adrenal health is so essential for our bones and really every aspect of our health. I'm really excited about Marcel's summit, the Adrenal Solution Summit that's coming up. And all the information will be in the show notes, but you could also just go to tinyurl.com slash adrenal solutions to register. So it's free. It sounds like it's going to be amazing with so many great speakers. And I'll have all Marcel's information as well in the show notes. So bye for now. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.